We begin college football final with like father, like son. Brendan Rice in Colorado visiting Stanford. You're like, well, wait a second. Last name Rice, I bet, he, yep, he is. Son of Hall of Famer Jerry Rice. Sam Neuer, here's some advice. Find Rice. 34-yard touchdown. One more look. Stanford cornerback Salim Turner Muhammad blitzes. Rice is like, dude, I'm open. Hit me. Colorado goes on to win. 35-32. Love seeing Jerry's son make a couple of catches. Is on the board with his first career receiving touchdown is Brandon. Now 49 He's shy. Close. He's, He's right there. there. He's yeah, right look, there. You got to say, Rome wasn't built in yeah. a day. It wasn't, and neither was Mississippi Valley State, where his father went. Jerry's 50 career receiving touchdowns tied for fifth most in FCS history. He caught 27 in 1984. 27 in 84. No FBS or FCS player caught more in a single season. Not even our own Joey Galloway. 84 was a good year. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, yeah, Matt Berry, right welcome here, into years. college football final. We start this program with this news that 15 games this week were either postponed or canceled due to COVID-19. Two of those in the Pac-12 impacted like everyone else, but the Pac-12 just starting their second week of the season. Perhaps their best team going right now, Oregon taking on Washington State up in the Palouse. Scoreless first quarter. Tyler Shuck option passes to DJ Johnson virtual lock implications for Jess 13 yards wanted to see some improvement in the passing game for Oregon after what we saw last week but this year good start capped off a 15 play drive tell you what Cougars came to play Jaden Deloria fires to Lucas Bacon sizzling 18 yard touchdown but Washington State went for two after this touchdown it's in the first quarter's early they didn't get it that's what Oregon does they go for two then Deloria rolls right when our bell Washington State remember leads. the name Jaden Deloria true freshman St. Louis High School out of Honolulu. That's where Mariota and Tua played. Here come the Ducks, though, just before the half. C.J. Verdell, three yards the hard way, cuts it to 19-14. Third quarter, same score. Ducks threatening. Shuck to Travis Dye, 16-yarder. And Shuck had a big game, 312 passing yards with four touchdowns. Oregon takes the lead. 21-19, fourth quarter. Ducks ball, Shuck option. Johnny Johnson What I third. liked about Shuck, too, he was resilient. Threw a pick in this game early, had a fumble on his own read, but he collected himself and played big late. We're on that cover watch for Jess here. 8.38 to go. Ducks lead. Shuck to Dye, 71 yards of perfection. Dye had two catches in this game. None bigger than this one. So Oregon starts to extend their lead. Washington State fought their way back, but then it's die 21 yards down to the one. Oregon's going to punch it in a play later. Jess, breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, no, I felt pretty good about this the entire time, to be honest. Oregon overcame three early turnovers. With all that speed on offense, they're just too explosive. Tell you what, Oregon looks the part of a really good team in the Pac-12. How would USC do against Grant Gannell in Arizona? 75 yards, another virtual lock implication for Jess. Tavion Cunningham runs it in for the touchdown. And there's issues on the back end of this USC defense for the second week in a row. They've given up big plays. Ties it at 20, fourth quarter USC trails Keaton Slovis to Amon Ross St. Brown down at the five. All right Keaton Slovis threw for over 300 yards in this game but he was not accurate even that duck over the middle of the field lucky that got caught. Duck is putting it nicely then Slovis to Eric Kromenhoek end zone for the touchdown USC leads by four under two to go same score Gunnell here come the cats Stanley Berryhill and you have to be better than this on defense you have guys in position a free guy has to make this tackle if you're a legitimate team USC Arizona leads and you're not going to believe what happens here Slovis to St. Brown it's tipped that is unbelievable. <laughs> the football gods are smiling Very on USC friend. early this season. That, because it is unbelievable. To last week against Arizona oh, State. You? This is on fourth Barry, down. thank you for putting this Look in here. Slovis trying to go downfield here. Hey. Gets tipped. Ooh, Brew McCoy, what Johnny on the spot. On what are fourth we? and 13. Hey. What are we doing hey. with USC? That's why you draw it up sometimes. All right. Back to present day. First and goal. Vavai Malapai, eight yards for the touchdown. The play would be revealed viewed it would stand Malapai fights the defenders and guys for the second consecutive week after trailing with two minutes or less in the game USC wins 34 30 they've won eight straight against Arizona I guess Helton a, a win is a win is a win at the end uh, our kids uh, did what they did last week uh, when it mattered the most uh, I didn't see any panic um, they showed great poise 
to have a little bit over a minute on the clock with three timeouts. Uh, we felt extremely comfortable. Um, it's what we do each and every week and practice each and every week. And the guys, the guys executed to perfection. All right, so Clay Hilton and USC, they sweep the Arizona schools off tip balls nonetheless. Like I said, a win is a win. <laughs> it seems fun ways. So, so, Joey, look, USC hasn't looked the part, but their record says they're 2-0. and Exactly, and, and they got to be happy to be 2-0. and But in this era, when we're talking about a shortened season, six games to get them in, and we have these conversations about the Pac-12 and their ability to get to the playoff. USC as a team is returning a lot of talent. 37 guys had started the game last season. Slovis, 30 touchdowns as a, as a freshman. So this season, we expect them to be explosive, expect them to look good. And they have found ways to win again. They're 2-0. Tip passes at the end of the game. They had 500 yards offense in this game. But when you look at their defense and the big plays they give up, it looks like they're going to be in a dogfight every single week. And if they can continue to win, they'll get to the end of the season. They don't have to face Oregon in regular season. The best thing that can happen for the Pac-12 is Oregon go undefeated, USC go undefeated, and they meet in a Pac-12 championship game. That's their best chance to get a team into the playoff. Oregon looks the part, though, Jim. And I think that's the Pac-12's best shot at getting in the college football playoff. And that really was the expectation heading into this season. Now, there's a lot of newness here, especially on offense. Joe Moorhead's the new offensive coordinator. Tyler Shuck, a new quarterback. Five new starting offensive linemen. Their defense had a bunch of key players opt out. You've seen them now through two games. They were living dangerously against Wazoo, but I do see them sort of gelling on both sides of the ball, and they're progressing. They're starting to make plays, and you can see the talent on this team. Now, the key for Oregon, there's only four regular season games left. There's limited opportunities now to prove to the committee that you are, in fact, one of the best four teams in the country. So if you're Oregon... From this point on out, you've got to dominate your opponent, and it starts with UCLA next Verdell, week. Verdell, Johnny Johnson the third, Thibodeau on defense. They've got star power guys. where they Jaylen need Red it. And Oregon receiver, looked yeah. really, really good. And speaking of looking good, the story last week, Notre Dame against Clemson, they look really, really good in the upset. Could they avoid 1993 all over again where they beat a number one team and then went and lost to Boston College the following week? In fact, flux capacitor... We'll take the gigawatts, 1993, BC down, David Gordon, 41-yard field goal, and Lou Holtz was like, wait a second, we just had a game of the century against Florida State, we lose to BC? Yeah, you did. Present day, Boston College down 3-0, Phil Jerkovic, Zay Flowers, BC up 7-3. Remember the start Boston College got against Clemson? They start off early playing loose. They're willing to take their chances, and they get out early against Notre Dame. I'll tell you what, they do send it early. Here, Ian Book, Ben Skaronic, a story yeah, again. Yeah, the Northwestern transfer, six foot three. He's proving that he can big body against cornerbacks and go up and make plays for contested passes. Listed at what? Would we say? Six two, six, six three, three, three. Plays six, six three. ten. Plays like he's six ten. Ensuing drive, Book to Avery Davis. This is a lot of yak for Davis. Takes it to the two yard line. Davis had two catches for seventy. But Ian Book, once again, the ability to go downfield is different for this offense the past couple and weeks. And then they'll do this. Sebo Flemister takes it in. Notre Dame takes a 17-13 lead, finding their rhythm offensively later. Second and goal. Book, Skoranek, book it. And I like what Tommy Reese, the offensive coordinator, is doing, moving Skoranek around. We saw the first TD outside on a fade. This one in the slot running the smash route. Ian Book's got the feed as well, Joe. Yeah, he does a nice job here. 85 yards rushing, see the pump fake, gets it in, he's athletic. 45-plus points in consecutive games for the first time since 1996. Notre Dame wins. Yeah, I would I would question at times whether we had the, uh, the mental focus. Um, the toughness is there. Um, you know, uneven at times. Uh, I thought Book played great. Uh, I thought the offense was was really good. Uh, showed a physicality, uh, certainly, that um, we wanted to have out there today. But um, it, we're a bit tired on defense. You could see that today. It wasn't it wasn't our best performance defensively, but it's it's hard to win, and to get the win tonight was great. Uh, this team's just resilient. We talked about it all week. Coach Kelly did a great job of uh, setting the message straight, and that was and a pretty emotional game last week, you know, high of all the highs, and it's about forgetting about it and moving on. And it's a long season. Um, you know, credit to BC. They played a heck of a game, and, you know, we'll head into our bye week, get a little bit of rest, and we've got some, uh, a few more games we got to win for sure. Joey, show me what Ian Book does well. And Ian Book is 28-3 as a start, and early in the season, it was his legs and their ability to run the ball is how this offense was built. But in this past couple games, Ian Book has done a nice job of getting the ball out of his hands, getting it downfield, letting his playmakers, like, 
Sebo Flem Flemister. Get it out. There's a blitz coming. You know you have man-to-man. -man. Get it out fast. You got a deep ball down the sideline, which removes the corner. Now there's a lot of space for Flemister to take this ball, get up the sideline, and get this ball into the end zone. And that's been a difference in this offense against Clemson and then against Boston College is going downfield for the splash plays. And again, he's looking to the right. Doesn't see what he likes. It's not wide open. Ian Book early in the season would tuck this ball, take off running with his feet. This time, backs out, keeps his eyes downfield, finds Skoronek wide open to the sideline, and this is a touchdown. And that's where he's been different, his ability to make these plays down the field as opposed to tucking it and running with the football. So, Jesse, Book threw an interception of the season opener against Duke, but has thrown 204 consecutive passes without one since. All he does is win games. He's 28-3 and three now as a starter. I'm just impressed with Notre Dame's ability to handle success after beating number one Clemson, refocusing on a tough Boston College team that they knew was going to bring their A-plus game. And Notre Dame got back to just being physical. They ran for 274 yards. Their defense was hitting. Book's playing better. They need to play with a sense of urgency. We're all talking about Notre Dame, Clemson in the ACC title game, they can't look that far ahead. You got a bye week now, get refocused because you're playing UNC on the road now. Looking the part does Notre Dame. You're right, a great, I don't want to call it a bounce back, but a great answer to the Clemson win. What about Miami, Virginia Tech? Miami dealing with some COVID numbers, a little shorthanded. They were an underdog against Virginia Tech who lost to Liberty a week ago. No shame in that. Hendon Hooker fakes the raid. Takes it 53 yards for the touchdown. And I think that's the interesting part about this Virginia Tech team. We see it week in and week out. They win, they lose, they lost to Liberty, and then all of a sudden they're up on number nine Miami looking good early. They did look good early because here Jalen Holston rumbles it in for the eight-yard score, and all of a sudden, hokey hokey high, 14-3 over the U. Maybe Vegas knew something, but here comes Miami down 24-13. Cameron Harris, six yards. You like seeing this if you're a Miami fan. Remember Harris had two 100-yard games to start the season. He's been banged up, injured, but he had a good one here. Oh, and you also love seeing this, too. When they needed him most, Eric King, play fake, Mark Pope, 36-yard score. King threw for 255, but more importantly, he's now gone three straight games without throwing an interception. And so Hendon Hooker had an opportunity, but there was an interception late in the game. And Miami wins 25-24. Second straight win when trailing through three quarters. Giving credit. Went on the road and got it done for Manny Diaz and crew. We're a resilient bunch. We proved that week in, week out. Uh, this was a difficult week. Uh, we're down a lot of guys. It was a little dicey whether we'd be here. The guys out there, they made the sacrifices necessary to, to play this game. And then they had to dig deep. That was a great effort by, by Virginia Tech. I mean, what a ball game. Um, but we felt like we get the game in the fourth quarter. We felt like we, we could be the stronger team in the fourth quarter, and turned out that was exactly the case. You know, last week we had a game similar to this, and offense had to go uh, get a game-winning drive, and today the defense did it. So, um, man, shout-out to the defense. They, they saved us today. Uh, you got to keep building on this and get ready for next week. Still ahead on college football final. How would you sum up Michigan season of sound effect? Yeah. What about Indiana? Wee! Anyway, <laughs> we're going to make the Big Ten look better than we sound. Plus, was he up to the trask against Arkansas? We had a point total and a virtual lock. We're off and running. This is college football final. Matt, Jesse, Joey back with the college football final. Wisconsin and Michigan. First game for the Badgers since October 23rd. Did you know they hadn't won in Ann Arbor since 2010? First quarter, no score. Joe Milton, rough start, picked off by Scott Nelson. Joe Milton coming off back-to-back 300-yard -back games. You're trying to force one over the middle of the field. That's not on him, though. Tight end got to come up with that pass. Wisconsin, big takeaway. All right, so here come the Badgers offensively. Chimray DK comes around, reverse, cuts up field. 30-yard game. This is a great play call. They ran the ball well in this game. They're physical up front, and you can just see the Michigan defense didn't react well seeing the reverse. And this is peak Wisconsin, two yards, Nikhil Watson. How about this? Michigan gave up 359 rushing yards last year to the Badgers. Gave up 341 in this one. Oh, my goodness. Then Milton under pressure. I don't know what that is, oh. but it's a pick right to Leo Chanel. And maybe the worst interception you will see this season. Oh. Jess, you said the first one wasn't his fault. Well, that one had to be his fault. The surrender Cobra's like, dude, I'm still here. And then Graham Mertz to Mason. Yeah, Graham Mertz didn't put up numbers like he did against Illinois. Didn't have a lot of practice time, but still looked comfortable in this one through TDs. Two TDs, no picks. And then Mertz this time up to Jake Ferguson in Wisconsin. May not have played a lot of football of late, but they still looked impressive. 49-11 the final. It was all Wisconsin. And Graham Mertz felt good about it. Watch a ton of film. <laughs> it's pretty much all you can do in quarantine. But uh, no, 
communicated with the guys, just kept kept in touch. Um, it was definitely rough, but we got through it, and, I, and I'm happy to be here today. At what point in this game did you start to feel like you got a rhythm back? I'd probably say like the second or third drive. I mean, you, you go two weeks of not practicing and going right into a game, and then uh, so it was definitely getting back into the groove of things, but I feel like we hit our stride at the right time. Joey, what is going on with Michigan's offense? They are struggling to run the ball, number one. Uh, we know Michigan to be a physical football team. This Josh Scattis offense is supposed to be between the tackles, downhill running. They've now gone two straight weeks under 50 yards rushing. Now, pass game was terrible in this game. Joe Milton, nine for 19 for 98 yards through the two interceptions. But when you look at Michigan, you look to their run game first, and they've been absolutely terrible. Yeah, and I'll take that one step further. The offense has been bad, but the defense, they've allowed a lot of points this season, most through four games in program history. However, two of the other three worst, the Wolverines finished with 10 win seasons. Sometimes the numbers don't correlate, but here's what well, we got, know. Yeah. Michigan, not good. They got two of their best players, Aiden Hutchinson and Quiddy Pay on the D-line, out because of injury. And that secondary, as we know, they're struggling as well. All right, let's check in on the other half of Michigan. It's Michigan State taking on Indiana. Spartans hadn't lost at home to Indiana since 2001, first quarter. Michael Panix Jr. to Ty Freifogel, 16-yard for the touchdown. Freifogel is that go-to guy in this offense. When they get him the ball out in space, he makes guys miss. I don't know what to say about this tackling by Michigan State. We know them to be a hard-nosed, hard-hitting, aggressive defense, and they just haven't been that I'm just calling season. it bad. Yeah, let's call it's it bad. Be All right. nice. So next Michigan State drive, Joey, what is happening on this play? They fool them with the zone defense. They look outside, and Lombardi is tied for the lead in the Big Ten in turnovers. But this is really bad. The corner is – how can he not see this corner? So the corner turns like he's going to run out, and he just stays right there. And he throws this ball right to him. Now Lombardi would get benched in this game, and you can see why plays like this are really hurting this Michigan State team. Jesse, what did we say last week? It feels like we're calling Fry Fogel's name every week on this show. Indiana has again. so much skill. Here he is working a boundary route down the sideline. How about the throw by Michael Penix Jr. putting it where only his guy can make the play? Fry Fogel, 200 yards receiving and two TDs. All right, so I want to show you this play. This is Thomas Allen. He's son of head coach Tom Allen. He's in at linebacker. Michigan State runs the ball. Allen taken down behind the play. He's slow to get up. He'd be carted off. Coach Allen, at this point, he's a father. Throws his arms around his son. Gives him a kiss. Sees him off the field. Fourth quarter now. Michigan State switches quarterbacks to Peyton Thorne. Same as it ever was. Hoosiers returned 53 yards. Michigan State had 161 total yards and four turnovers. 4-0 in conference play are Tom Allen and the Hoosiers for the first time since 1987. I'm just really proud of our guys to come here. It's been a tough place for us to win over the years. And to get a shutout here is pretty special. That didn't happen very often. And to get our fifth Big Ten win in a row, um, fourth of the season, is just really uh, – really think you know, it's a pretty awesome thing. It's amazing. You know, the team we played, you know, we played great on defensive side and you know, on the offensive side. I feel like we left a lot of points on the board, but it was still a team win. And, you know, we're happy that we got it. Jess, what's working for Penix Jr. in this Indiana Well, they got tons of skill at wide receiver and a lot of speed and guys that can make plays in space. Here, a split safety look by Michigan State. They spread you out. You got Wap Fillier in the slot. He's going to get into that open area. It's a nice throw in anticipation by Penix Jr. giving his receiver a shot. Just too much speed and quickness and the ability to make a catch in traffic. But it's not just in the slot. Outside Ty Freifogel. Wide field speed out. This is an NFL type throw. To complete this, Michael Penix has to have anticipation. Throwing it before the receiver comes out of the break. Look, nobody's going to stop Ohio State and Justin Fields from scoring this year, but I think Indiana in the regular season has the best shot at beating the Buckeyes because of the skill and the scheme on offense, and they're going to play next week in Columbus. And the reason why Indiana is undefeated and a much more complete team than we've seen in the past is because they've improved on the defensive side. I don't think they will stop Justin Fields, but they got a much better chance of staying in that game because their defense is playing pretty good. They also shut out a team on Saturday, a Big Ten team on the road for the first time since 94. Tom Allen's got this thing going for Indiana. What about Northwestern taking on Purdue? Second quarter, second and 11, tied at 10. Peyton Ramsey to Ramad Chalkeel Bowman, 18-yard touchdown. You know, we talk a lot about De'Ara King and the impact he's had as a transfer at Miami at quarterback. How about Indiana transfer Peyton Ramsey, how well he's been for Northwestern? So here we go, third quarter, same score. Aiden O'Connell scrambles, fumbles, recovered by Patty Fisher, 22 yards. 
I don't know if there is a scrappier team in college football than Northwestern. You don't see a ton of five-star guys, four-star guys, but they get the job done. They all look like Pat Fitzgerald. And then Ramsey to Chaikio Bowman, five-yard touchdown. Northwestern up 24-10, fourth quarter, trailing 27-13. Here comes O'Connell to Xander Horvath. This is fourth and four. I love Xander Horvath. He's 6'3", 230 pounds. He does not come off the field. They don't have a committee approach at tailback because he does it all. That is so big, 10. And then O'Connell to Milton Wright, 14-yard score. How about Purdue had two yards rushing in this game? But they're still in it because O'Connell in that pass game. One score game, 27 20, 204 left, fourth and 14, still down seven. O'Connell incomplete, too high intended for David Bell. Good defense there. And Northwestern wins 27 20, sets up the big one against Wisconsin, 4 0 in the Big Ten for the first time since 96. Yeah, just tough. I mean, listen, it's hard to win conference games. Weather's bad, you're on the road, you're playing at night. I mean, you got all these negative things. You got to flush that out, stay positive. Our bench was awesome tonight. Really proud of our guys, and now we got a huge game next week. Still ahead on college football final. The top five of Jesse and Joey may not change, but who can sneak up into the playoff? They'll discuss that coming up next. Plus, Fresno State just scored a lot of points on Saturday. Jake Hayner had a game, as Jeff told us, 422 and four TDs. Helmet sticker implications? Find out on college football final. Joseph Galloway needed a 60-point total in the Felipe Franks Bowl. Florida, Arkansas, former Florida quarterback Felipe Franks now for Woo Pig. And air mails a deep ball to Mike Woods. Looked good early, 47-yarder. And the key to getting that 60, Barry, a number that you hated this pick by me, was right. Arkansas getting some points, and they did. And they did early. And then we've seen this all year out of Kyle Trask, Trayvon Grimes, 23-yarder. Oh. Kyle Pitts, no, a tight end. He's not playing, so how would the passing game look? Looked pretty good. And there's a coverage bust on the back end here by Arkansas. This is a banjo coverage. Outside guy stays outside. No one takes Grimes. On the post, it's just too easy. Six catches, a buck 09, and two TDs. For can't drives. do that. The banjo coverage can't do that. The violin coverage can't do that. The guitar coverage, you can't do this. No, no Kyle Pitts, but still Jacob Copeland, 33 yards. It didn't matter. Kyle Trask threw the 10 different wide receivers, and if he's not in the Heisman conversation yet, he better be real soon. Where's Trask at this point after five TDs in the first half, Jess? Oh, no, he's in. I mean, he's right there with everybody else. And again, I mean, we're not saying Kyle Pitts, we're not saying Kadarius Tony. That one there to Jacob Copeland. Well, there's a lot of other guys in this offense that can score. 63-35. Danny Mullen hangs a 60 spot on Arkansas. Kyle Trask, he's really good. I mean, obviously he's pretty cool, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, we're just trying to take it one week at a time. You know, get the win, go one and away every week. I mean, I just try to stay out of, um, you know, all the outside noise. You know, I try to just stay locked in and, you know, just grind on my preparation and take it one week at a time. All right, guys, a unique take for who you think could be in the college football playoff with the Capital One fan votes. All right, Matt Barry, our top fives are staying the same this week. The only two teams that actually played games this weekend are Notre Dame and Cincinnati. So this is where we are. But, Joey, let's do some projecting. Which team outside of your top four could you see getting into the college football playoff? I think Florida, and it's a bit of a surprise the way they've played, uh, beating Georgia. The way Kyle Trask is playing, mm -hmm. they got a chance of getting in. Now, their remaining schedule is 7-17. Seven and 17. They have Vandy, Kentucky, Tennessee, and LSU left. Not a lot of fear in that last four games. Yeah. If they win those, get to the SEC championship game. If they knock off Alabama, which the way they're playing is very possible, they absolutely get into the top four. The way their offense is playing, I think they could beat them, and then maybe the committee would put two SEC teams in. I'm going to look at Cincinnati. Could they be the first group of five team ever to crack the college football playoff? What they have going for them, they pass the eye test. They play defense. They run the ball. Desmond Ritter's been better throwing it recently, so they look complete. They're beating their opponents by an average of 29 points per game. The issue is the strength of schedule. No power five opponents. So they need some help. They need to beat UCF down the stretch. They need SMU to keep winning to be ranked as high as possible in the AAC championship game. And then they need the ACC, the SEC, and the Big Ten not to send two teams into the college football playoffs. You need Bama to win out, Notre Dame to win out, or Clemson to smash Notre Dame in the ACC title game. And they need Ohio State to win so out. So they as need well. some help. And I love Tennessee. I love Cincinnati, and that's yeah. why I have them ranked at number five. Now here's the question: In your top four. Which team could you see possibly playing their way out 
of the playoffs. I'm going to go with Notre Dame. Now, they beat okay. Clemson, gave themselves some wiggle room to maybe lose once and still get in, but it's not going to be easy going undefeated the rest of the regular season. Road games at UNC, at Wake Forest, both good offenses, but it's the ACC title game if they face off against Clemson, fully reloaded with Trevor Lawrence. They get guys back on defense. If Clemson blows Notre Dame out, could that be enough to convince the committee that Notre Dame, in fact, is not one of the best four teams in the country. And I'm going to stay with that same game because with that being said, Notre Dame does have a win over Clemson. Yep. So I think that gives Notre Dame a shoe in because of that big win. Now, of course, Clemson was banged up. We expect Clemson to get healthy. We expect Trevor Lawrence to be back. We expect James Skalski to get back. So when they get to the ACC championship game, if they are healthy, they go against a Notre Dame team and Notre Dame beats them again, mm -hmm. that would give them two losses they would be out, and then that opens the door for the conversation we just had about a Cincinnati, a Florida. The door could be blown wide open. This is not going to be an easy decision down the road for the committee. No. Still a lot of uh, what ifs to come. It would help, though, if more of these teams could actually play on the weekend. Nice. So we're hoping to see that uh, next weekend, Bear. Yeah, guys, you want to get the COVID cancellations and postponements because they keep coming every week. Clemson returns from their bye week. So does Trevor Lawrence against Florida State. That's noon Eastern on ABC in a schedule at least that looks good. Hopefully we make it through the week and don't forget to give your Capital One fan votes via Sports Center's Twitter handle on Monday. Back to the fun SMU taking on Tulsa fourth quarter. Tulsa was down in this game. They have to come back Zach Smith to Josh Johnson. What's well, interesting thing and we never see this before. You see that 24 points. SMU had that in the first half. Tulsa's defense shut them out in the second half and then Smith to James Palmer, not Jesse James Palmer. No, but definitely not related either, Doesn't? unfortunately. No. You know, it'd be interesting to see where Tulsa is ranked by the committee when those rankings come out after next week. Remember, this is a team that beat UCF. Now they beat the SMU. 3-0 and and trailing by 14-plus points this season is Tulsa. Western Carolina and Liberty. You guys know the Liberty story by now. Mm -hmm. Malik Willis is the story. Johnny Huntley is the reception. And if you haven't seen Malik Willis play yet, go see him play. They got NC State next week. He had three 300 yards passing, three TDs, 97 rush yards, and two TDs. He's just so good. Well, it's just been a good week for head coach Hugh Freeze. His team is ranked. They're unbeaten. Hugh Freeze just got a brand new contract, and he's got one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the country. Ain't no best start in program history. Liberty keeps on rolling. Well, I tell you what, we had points of plenty in Wake Forest and UNC. These two teams have split the last four meetings. Sam Howell had a day. Daz Newsom, 44 yards for the touchdown. And hopefully you had the over in this game, which I believe was what at 70. Newsom had 10 catches, 189. Watch the inside Ugh. route. Breaks out. That's a linebacker trying to cover Newsom. No chance. But, guys, we've seen this out of North Carolina all year. They start slow. Defense had some holes. Sam Hartman took and, advantage. And Wake Forest is a sneaky good team. They had won four in a row coming into this one, I think, in large part because of Sam Hartman. And then here, watch Michael Carter run the wheel route. Watch Howell just put it on him. And North Carolina has two of the top four rushers in the ACC. So when those backs come out of the backfield, defense are expecting run. They sneak up the sideline. Great throw. So after Wake Forest scored 24 straight points, Sam Howell and the Tar Heels had to cut it down. We're tied now. Yeah, Sam Howell's style of play reminds me a lot of Baker Mayfield in terms of the way he throws the ball, how he moves around in the pocket. If things aren't open, he takes off and runs. 550 passing yards and six touchdown passes for Sam Howell. That, both career highs. A perfect illustration. 20-yard score. Tar Heels came all the way back. They take the lead, and then Javante Williams punches it in from 50. It is going to be a fun game to watch. North Carolina against Notre Dame. I'm taking the over. 21-point comeback tied for the largest in school history. We had 782 combined yards. We had all kinds of fun in this one. Howell tied at ACC single game record, six passing touchdowns, giving him 61 in his career. Good for third most by any player in ACC history through their sophomore season. And he has three games left on the schedule. Still ahead on college football final. Someone was going to win between Penn State and Nebraska. It wasn't a Picasso, but it was a win for one of these two storied programs. Plus, in the only game Coast Guard is going to play this year, they had Merchant Marine, and they retained the Secretary's Cup with the 24-14 win over the Coast Guard. Matt, Jesse, and Joey back with you. College football final. Marshall was hosting Middle Tennessee State on Saturday. 
It marks the 50th anniversary of the flight that killed 37 players and five coaches. Phyllis, University had a, held a memorial service Saturday morning so friends and family could pay their respects prior to kickoff of this game. The team wore the numbers on a scroll, wore black jerseys and uniforms in their honor, and Grant Wells, once we got down to football, looked really good. Corey Gamage, 28-yard score. Yeah, the redshirt freshman quarterback from Charleston, West Virginia, has been unbelievable this year. Five passing touchdowns in this game. They're a complete team. They play good defense. They blow everybody out. Most importantly, undefeated 7-0. 42-14, the final. Another emotional story. Uh, Kentucky was taken on Vanderbilt after the tragic passing of their offensive line coach, John Schlarman. First play of the game, Kentucky honored the coach, leaving one spot open on the offensive line. The other offensive lineman comes back into the game wearing number 65 to honor Coach Schlarman. They took the penalty on the first play, and then 65 came in to honor their coach. Fourth quarter now, Kentucky up 10. Chris Rodriguez, 74 yards, found the opening and takes it. And what a way to honor their O-line coach. Running the ball, Rodriguez, 13 carries, 149 yards, two touchdowns, but Kentucky, 308 rushing yards in this game. Hey, what, they eked it out against Vanderbilt. They put up a fight 38-35, the final Kentucky wins. Someone had to win between Penn State and Nebraska, right? I mean, I don't think it was going to end in a tie. That would have been embarrassing. Luke McCaffrey to Xavier Betts, 45-yard score. Yeah, that's Christian McCaffrey's little brother, true freshman, getting his first start. This helps because that counts as a pass. That is a stat pattern. That is exactly what that is. Sean Clifford had a rough day. He really did. He had a rough season. I mentioned Lombardi from Michigan State being tied for the lead in turnovers in the Big Ten. He's tied with Sean Clifford. Had an interception and this fumble in this game. Jahan Dotson, 20, or Deontay Williams, rather, returns it for the touchdown. Then third quarter, Clifford's day was done. Will Levis in and Levis to Jahan Dotson. He, he did. Will Levis came in and he sparked this offense. We know Will Levis to be an excellent runner, but I thought he threw the football pretty well. Later in the drive here, Kevon Lee finds the hole, 31-yard touchdown. There's a bright spot in this game for Penn State. It's the fact that they ran the ball for 245 yards. They were able to get back into this game, and, and then Levis to Devin Ford. Even more impressive, Journey Brown out for the year. Noah Kane's injured as well, so this running back group is very depleted. So now down just seven, fourth and ten. Levis to Parker Washington, incomplete. Penn State turns it over on down, but Penn State would force a punt. They'd get the ball back. Levis complete, first down. And this has just been the kind of season it has been for this Penn State team. They're close. They got a shot. They fought their way back. Can they finish it? And they cannot finish it. Fourth and goal. Levis brought down. Pass incomplete. Mm. And here's the number that pops out to me as Nebraska gets their first win of the season, 30-23. to 23. Penn State is the fourth team to start its season 0-4. And Penn State's 0-4 for just the second time in school history. They're 0-4 after being a ranked team in the AP poll since Pitt in 1984. It's not official yet, but the last time the Nittany Lions finished with a losing record, 2004. What about Illinois and Rutgers as we continue our rip through the Big Ten? Fourth quarter tied at 20. Noah Vidral's pass goes off the hands of Rashawn Williams. Picked off by Nate Hobbs. Oh, yeah. Oski for six. This is the lovey ball. This is what Illinois was so good at doing last year, creating takeaways. They had three in this game. Oski to the 47, third pick of the game. Going for the win. Isaiah Williams drops back. Finds Casey Washington 16 yards along the sideline. Isaiah Williams ran the ball 31 times for 192 in a touchdown, but it was the big pass in this situation, giving Illinois a chance to Do we win. have a college kicker situation? We don't. James McCourt right down the middle. Illinois snaps their six-game losing Guys, streak. it's the favorite part of the program. Oh, oh, the yeah. Matt Berry and Rudy participation <laughs> and effort award. Pay attention. <laughs> Goes out to Asa Fuller from Fresno State. He's the kicker. This is about effort. Let's go, Matt Berry. Go get him. Look at the stride. Go. Now, fully here, extending the arms. But, Joey, this here's is where it gets dude, better. This is what no, I love this about is the this best play, part. Joey. Watch, Watch Barry back tell here him. Pointing. It's to the right. He's doing his job. He's telling everybody I got this. where the guy's going. Guys, I got your back. He's coming to our right. Hey, hey, Barry, why are you running with your arms straight? Dig, Barry. Lean. Come on, big fella. <laughs> 10 points for good <laughs> attention, <laughs> zero points for execution. Hey, for about 10 yards, you thought you had him. Traffic you option. thought you Great was job. running him down for 10 yards. Why does that guy run like Barry from the Goldbergs? <laughs> I mean, the, just arms The like straight that. arm no, run. straight arm never, run. It me, never works out, Barry. Let me tell you something. I'm going to have my comeuppance 
<laughs> when a kicker comes and lays one of you pretty boys out. We're doing some running A's and skipping B's later. <laughs> I we love the direction. The it's coming lot. to the right, guys. Yeah. He's running yeah. to the right. I told you where he's going. You guys remember something from last week? You guys were 0-4 in virtual locks. That was last week. Barely Here's remember. The thing. You guys are trying to move on. I'm trying to move on. But unfortunately, gentlemen, someone just can't move on. Jesse and Joey, 0-4 in virtual locks. That's a dollar. Hey, yeah, it is, Jack. Oh. Tell him, go. That's a dollar for losing people money. Only the great Jack Nicholas can tell you Buckeye. how it is. He's a Buckeye, by the way. Dollar. Come on, Golden Bear. <laughs>Sunbelt fun belt time. South Alabama, Louisiana. First quarter, Raging Cajuns lead 7 0. Chris Smith scores 22 yards. Pretty good run game out of Louisiana. 250 yards in this game. It's physical up front, moving parts. Defense couldn't find out where he went. Levi Lewis, also one of the more exciting players in this conference, rolls out, finds Trey Regis. Yeah, Billy Napier's team's done a nice job bouncing back since their loss against Coastal Carolina. They've now won four in a row, keeping their Sun Belt Conference Championship hopes alive. They've, in fact, clinched the Sun Belt West for the third consecutive season. All right, virtual lock time, Appalachian State. Ugh. Old Joseph had them minus the points. We get excited before games at Appalachian State. Quad Brown rolls left. Sam Pickney, 19-yard touchdown. Quad Brown was 11 for 33, 152 yards. Not a great game, but they get out early lead. Third quarter, App State trailing 10-3. Zach Thomas deep. End zone picked off in yeah, Tavius Lane. If you're Zach Thomas, you played too much football to just force a post route into double coverage like that. So later in the third, they're still trailing 10-3. Thomas to Henry Pierce, and that's more like it. Nine-yard touchdown. And App State defense was playing well after the initial touchdown, keeping them in this game. So, Joey, when did you know they weren't going to cover the 17 points? Uh, right around halftime when the offense wasn't exactly clicking. And when do you think they cared that they covered the points? <laughs> they could care less. This is what happens when, when we don't get our locks. Fights. On the all, field. Right, all right, so guys, look, you bounce back from the 0-4. Jack's going to be happy that you're not 0-4 this week. He's going to build this thing back. I want another With video. all the COVID cancellations, he's got, I mean, look, it's tough. He's got 500. But we're building We're building this thing back up. Brick by brick, we're going to We're going to keep on chopping. Can we row the boat? Can we row, row no. the boat? Okay. Yeah, we got a new segment this year on college football final. It's called That's a Dollar. We fine each other a dollar for saying or doing stupid things. Some would say it's a Barbie world. That's a dollar. That's a dollar. That is a dollar. Doink misses. Ah. Look at his boy 34 right here. He's like, no, oh, no. Oh, you didn't even headbutt you have doing? Before. Go sell some lemonade, bring back 50 cents each, and pay your dollar. <laughs> I don't care. You're the punter. You got one job. Juggle, got it. No, I don't. Oh, James Beam hanging out. That'll help with the pain. It's a terrible camera angle. Well, it's a game. We're here. We're playing. Did I miss class? Actually, there was a kick, but TV was not ready. This is ill-advised every day of the week. All right, start with my dollar. D. Wiggins, Miami receiver. Does a good job keeping his feet here until he finds the net. And he's a receiver, so he should have the skill to avoid the net. But he should see the white line and realize he's out of bounds. I think he did it on purpose. He and I'd like to rescind like the dollar for that, but that's a dollar. How about Army? They're going to lateral this ball. Woo! Is, is this still called a pick six? Throw <laughs> Robinson Wait, laterals the ball. That is incredible. Tavian pulls, picks Sweet. it off. This is Ugh. called a fumble, so it would really be like a scoop and score that looks like a pick six. That's a dollar, Army. I thought he looked sweet when he threw it on the run. He did, though, too. He's like, right, how about Houston beat. scoring 56 points? My guy here's got to do a bunch of push-ups. Those are not full push-ups, nope. not half push-ups. Those are a tenth of a push-up. The best part is when he gets to 56, 55, and 56. He's the that's a man. Man. Yeah. If you got gonna, the If, if you're going to mail it in like that, just use a shake weight. That is a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> we could have put him on the Matt Berry yeah, Award for that. I love at What's the end how he just got it all in. He's, he's like, like, he's like they're, they're watching this one. Oh, <laughs> here's the ball extension. It, let's go. All right, so we've got a bonus dollar this week okay. in honor of the Masters, a mm. tradition unlike any other. In Arizona State's John Rahm. This makes me happy. He grounded his oh. second shot to this point. 
and then he hit it off the tree. The best part of him hitting off the tree is a part five, by the way, is his body language when he does it. Watch him. And, and I've done this so many times. It makes me happy yeah. to see the pros with my issue. Yeah. What made it? Ha what made you happier, that or the actual ground ball he hit with his second shot? Ground ball. Ground ball made me happy. That's a good old fashioned yes, I do it every time I play. Top plays now. Number five, Asher O'Hara finds mm. CJ Windham, goes over to the defender to make what the catch. Asher O'Hara, he's known for being a running quarterback, but here giving his receiver an opportunity that is full body control. Two hands. Two paws Come on, on that Barry. football. A Number two hand pitch? four, Sam Neuer. I don't select these. Brendan Rice. Rice stays. Kicked Rice. Stayed. What a, what a catch. Look at Way this. to stay with the ball. Mm. Down on the knee. Full layout from one knee. It's as almost as if his play. dad was Jerry Rice. Number three, Will Jones picked off by Darrell Johnson. Goes up, makes oh, the one-handed grab. We're always making fun of DBs. We're like, our defenders were like, dude, there's a reason you play defense because you can't catch. This This proves us wrong. This guy was probably a baller in high school on offense. I think it's probably a good basketball. For all we know, he plays both ways. North Carolina Wake Forest, Sam Howell finds De'Ami Brown. These two were so fun to watch Saturday. Yeah, there's a lot of offense in North Carolina. Over 740 yards of offense. This one, I don't even know if he saw the ball when it jumped into his hand. Just Apparently, it was just slipped right in there. That's because Sam Howell put it exactly where you needed to. Yeah, right off the defender. And then Shai Smith is South Carolina's best weapon. Yeah, people weren't sure if Colin Hill was going to start this game at quarterback for South Carolina. Shai Smith trying to do his best to help his buddy out here. An unbelievable grab. Great hand strength. Gets the right hand between two defenders. How about this fella's Twitter handle for UCF? Because UCF gets the win. Flag dirt. Probably was hitting the dirt when he tweeted this. Uncle, uncle. Pretty succinct. And oh, by the way, it's the most coveted individual award in sport. The helmet sticker ceremony imminent on college football final. We had between Ole Miss, South Carolina, Matt Corral for Lane Kiffin just loves this offense. Wide open here, 91 yards to Elijah. How about Matt Corral threw for five, 13, and four touchdowns? This had to be his easiest completion of the season. Elijah Morton, big game, 13 catches, 225, and two touchdowns. Let's well, just play again. You got six defenders. They're watching the QB. It leaves more wide open down the middle field. You know, Laney, he does this like every play. He thinks every play is a wide open touchdown. On this one, though, he actually throws the clipboard go up get him, in Lane. the air. Go get him, Lane. And then Come tries on, to Lane. go get him. That's Rips the, the headset off. He's pointing, fist pump. Lane still got it. By the way, Matt Corral finished with 533 total yards, second most in Ole Miss history behind Archie Manning. Bonus dollar going on here. Look at this punt attempt by Washington. Goes over the punter's head. Oh. He tries to punt it. It gets blocked, and then they're just kicking the ball around. <laughs> that guy just got deboed. Jaden Grant would end up getting the touchdown. Oh. That's a season worth of dollars in one play. Wow. Look at this Snap again. over his head. What was he going to like, do? Like, just jump on the ball, kick it out of bounds, try to scoop it up. Makes a guy missing at that point. I thought, wow, yeah, he's actually going to like the effort, positive. though. So do I. I mean, what else was you going to do with that? You might as well try to kick it. Well, then it cost his team a touchdown. And then we wouldn't have a bonus dollar. You know what? Here's what we've come to learn. You can try as hard as you want. You can do what you want, how you want, when you want. You're never going to outdo Pac-12 after dark. True. All right. Best part of the program, helmet sticker ceremony time. Joey Galloway has Kyle Trask had six touchdown passes. Apparently, somebody left a helmet sticker on there. That would be a dollar two. Six touchdown passes. Now has 28 touchdown passes on the season. That is a SEC record through six games. You gave him a helmet sticker before. So Probably. You we'll, can we'll, collect we'll, helmet we'll stickers. Yeah, you can. All right, Ty Fry Focal from Indiana, guys. 11 catches, 200 yards, two TDs in their win against Michigan State. Uh, becomes the first Indiana receiver with 200 yards and two TDs in the same game at Indiana since 93. Sam Howell accounted for seven touchdowns on Saturday, 550 passing yards and six passing touchdowns are both single game school records. Mac, we got to work on the defense a little bit, but you got some franchise quarterback, Sam Howell, very much deserved. Please that. get some defense. Fresno State, Jalen Cropper, 10 catches, 200 yards, three touchdowns. That's been done by 10 other players at Fresno State, but it's still pretty good. Isaiah Williams, true freshman. He got the first start of the season at quarterback for the Illini. They beat Rutgers, threw for 104 yards. That was cool, but he ran for a program record for quarterbacks, 192 yards against the Scarlet Knights. Once we hit helmet stickers, it's program. Program. Uh, on Saturday, Marshall, the 50th anniversary of that horrific plane crash, and it's such an emotional time every time Marshall plays on this day.
And I tell you what, their quarterback, Grant Wells, stepped up. They played in the all-black uniforms to honor those fallen. Uh, five passing touchdowns, 336 yards. Good for him and good for Marshall on a very, very emotional day. The final helmet sticker. Guys, I'm going to leave you with this because I want to look ahead already. Indiana, Ohio State, mm. can the Hoosiers get it done? They can't get it done, but they're going to make a really good game of it. Congratulations to their 4-0 season so they're, far. They're going to score. They're not going to score enough. What's the over in that game right I'm now? I'm taking that over, too. 65. 65. No, Give it to 65. Me. Let's go.